There we go. All right. Am I on now? Hit pack two, volume up. Hello? Hello? Is it red or is it not red? Is the amp on? All right. All right, we'll figure this out as we go on this morning. Um, well, then it's the amp. A couple brief announcements this morning. First of which is, there I am, turn my volume back down. Yeah, it was definitely the amp. <laughs> and Erica to save the day. First announcement this morning, change my slide, is don't forget about our offering boxes available both in the front of the sanctuary and in the narthex for your givings, your offerings, and your tithes each Sunday morning. And it's just a way that it's convenient for all of us. And again, though we're emerging out of this season that we've lived in for a few years, now we are entering into cold and flu season, so that adds just that extra uh, layer of protection for us, so don't forget about that. You can also give by uh, mailing your uh, tithes and offerings in to the church or, um, or uh, through your bank as well. Wednesday evening, we'll have choir practice at 7 p.m. in the choir room. Scarlett's waiting for all of her joyful noisemakers to, to come back together and have a joyous noise of music each and every week so we can fill these seats up uh, next to me so I don't feel so alone up here. Uh, this evening is our Missional Network Youth Group Night, and this is our bonfire, fall bonfire slash s'mores event. It will be at Old Union UMC because we're allowed to burn things over there. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that'll start at 530 till 7. Don't forget about our trunk retreat, October 30th from uh, 3 to 4.30 here in our parking lot. And if you don't feel like going all out and doing a trunk and you want to just do some games or something like that, that's all right. Um, just get with Annette or sign up on the sign-up sheet out in our uh, Narthex or, or, or the Education Wing or just uh, message Annette and let her know what you are planning on doing. Methodist Women Chicken Pie Sale is November 12th. And that will be a big day for our Methodist women. Um, I was informed today that our um, first day of building the pies has changed from Friday to Saturday. So, Okay, so let me, let me get all of these announcements out there. So first is the production has moved from Friday to Saturday. If you want to help, come help cook and shred chicken, that is on Thursday at 9 a.m. And Saturday will also start at 9 a.m. And any Methodist women can take orders now and will be taking orders until... November the 1st. They got a projected number they are aiming for, and hopefully not much more than that, unless the orders come in wild and free. Are there any other... Miss Teen, Miss Randolph, Miss Teen Randolph County. Most outstanding. 
Well, I will find some pictures of that and get that up. So, uh, are there any other announcements? Yes. Next Sunday at 4.30, PPRC meeting. All right. And I normally wouldn't do this, but because I said I was going to, we had a birthday the latter half of this week, and I'm going to make her play her own birthday song. <laughs> so let us wish Miss Scarlett a happy birthday. Day to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, and many more. That's right, that's right. Our Methodist women make the ch best chicken pies out there. Let us enter a time of worship this morning with the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. Join me in prayer. Lord, as we gather in this space for your time, for your worship, for your praises, for your glory, for whatever it is that is on our hearts, minds, and souls, Lord, we are all in this place for different reasons. But we are all in this place for one main reason, and that is you, Lord. We are in this place to encounter you, to find you, to love you, and to show the passion that we have for you. Continue that passion in us each and every day, and allow us to see you working through us and in us each and every day. Guide us as we make decisions with our tithes, our offerings, our missions, whatever it may be in our lives and in the life of the church, that they, they, those decisions may be of and for you, Lord. May we be guided by you, and we, may we act as you did this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. You know, I couldn't find my driveway this morning. Could y'all find yours? Leaves everywhere. Just covered everywhere. But you know what? We, we made it here to the church. And I am so happy I'm here today. And I know that each and every one of you are too. Can I get an amen on that? It is good to see so many this morning. We're going to sing about the church this morning. Um, <clears throat> it's got it's kind of a little peppy, little catchy little song. So get peppy and get catchy. All right, let's stand together. We yeah, quick. <clears throat> the church you are the church we are the church together all of all of jesus all around the world yes we're the church together the church is not a building the church is not a steeple the church is not a resting place the church is a people i am the church you are the church, we are the church together. All of all of Jesus, all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people in many kinds of places, all colored and all ages.
message to from all times and places. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All of all of Jesus, all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Hands of churches marching, sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's running, sometimes hiding, always learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, they're singing and they're spraying, they're laughing and they're crying, sometimes all of it's saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news to the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All of all of Jesus, all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Well, this is a catchy little song, and it's awfully quick, but it says a whole lot. We follow Jesus, don't we? You may be seated. This time I would like to open it up for prayer requests, praise reports, and uh, updates on situations we've been praying for. I will go first with... Uh, Please continue to prayer in prayer for Harold and Hilda um, as Harold ended up, as you, many of you heard, back in the ER yesterday and, and or Friday and ended up admitted to High Point with uh, blood levels that were all out of whack, basically, to put, to put it bluntly, and that um, until they get back to that standardized point or get it all evened out back to a starting point they really can't start uh, treating uh, anything or looking for more things um, so that was that has been the goal the last couple of days the one praise is in all of the head scans that he's had every single one of them have come back clean so no signs of stroke or brain bleed at all so that is a huge positive in this situation and it's great have uh, Mr. Lineberry back with us this morning. Or me again. No, Mary the Lineberry. I'll get it right one of these days. It's only been three years. Monty McGinn, there. The, the Yankee lover, the Tampa Bay, and Boston hater. <laughs> Hey, I worry about baseball. I can only keep track of one one thing at a time. So, so, uh, but great to have him back in worship after he's had some uh, some ailments of his own. So, great to see you back. Are there others this morning? Yes. Actually, I was at. Uh, um, my continuing ed, we had a homecoming reunion thing, and they, they actually gave out an award for the person that came the furthest, and it was a friend of mine who came down from Minnesota. So, um, so yeah, but yeah, you definitely win the prize today. Are there others? Yes, keep Gwen in your prayers as she's having to kind of put her life on hold for a moment. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Diana. Awesome about those diagnoses. Doctors can only predict things. God knows when. So we may have them around a whole lot longer than doctors are ever predicted. You're good. You're good. Erica? Yes, traveling mercies for the band as we travel to Union Pines. Apparently some have made that trip <laughs> on uh, Saturday. A lot of back roads, if I remember correctly, going last year, so... Uh, are there other? Yes, Gwen.
refresher here for, for Gwen, for Lisa Cook, who has some blockages in her heart that uh, the doctors are just monitoring right now, but causing a lot of anxiety. Um, for the 15-year-old daughter of a co-worker that uh, said suicidal ideologies and all of those that we live in the presence of that are having those ideologies. And with from Scarlett, uh, a classmate that is struggling with addiction, and for Amber and Miley Meisenheimer that they would be able to uh, reconcile relationships. I did write that, sorry. <laughs> Just can't read my own writing sometimes. Are there others? Yes. Always pray for those that don't know Jesus. Let us go to the Lord. Lord, we have been brought into this place. We have been brought by you, directed by you, commanded by you, Lord. May we live into those commands. May we hear those commands. May we recognize those commands and not throw them away. May we not listen to the false prophets. Those that want to take Scripture and make it their own. May we not listen to those that would change the meaning of your words but instead listen to those that want to enhance the meaning of your word. Those that want to enhance the meaning of the apostles' words. Those that want to enhance and direct us to what they mean in our lives today. Continue to guide us. Continue to move us. Continue to even shake us up when we need that in our lives, Lord. Lord, as we approach a time in our lives in which memories will be coming up. Be with all of those that will have an open seat at the table this year, maybe for the first time, or maybe it's been there for a long time. Those memories will still be there. Let us know that you are with us through those times. Let us know that you are carrying us during those times. Let us know that you are part of us each and every day. I ask this in your son's holy and powerful name, praying the prayer that the Lord, the Son, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now on your orders of worship it says hymn of preparation. But we got scripture next in the PowerPoint. Somewhere along the line I got that flipped in my template. And I put big arrows saying flip around for next week. <laughs> So, uh, our scripture today comes from the second letter to Timothy, starting in the third chapter, and it reads as follows. But as for you, continue in what you have learned, and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from a childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient and equipped for every good work. In the presence of God, and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage 
with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate. Yeah, that word. Apparently my mouth doesn't want to work this morning. Accumulate for themselves teachers to serve, suit their own desires, and will turn away from the listening to the truth and wander away to the myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do not work, do the work of the evangelist, and carry out your ministry fully. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. What a beautiful scripture we've just heard. We're going to sing about it too. It's thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Let us stand as we worship and praise. <clears throat> to my feet and a light unto my path when I feel afraid think I've lost my way still you're there right beside me and nothing will I fear as long as you are near please be near me to the Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side, and I will love. is beautiful words. Thank you. You may be seated. Itching ears. Kind of a weird title for a sermon. I don't know. I didn't make it up. I'm borrowing it from a series that we've been going through with these Timothy texts. But as I got into this text... The idea of itching ears came out even more. Now we've all heard all the old wives' tales, all the superstitions, all the things about what it means if your ear itches. And yes, sometimes your ear itches just because you have an ear infection. But there's all sorts of wives' tales and myths and mythology around that. So I decided to dig a little deeper with those things this week. Figure out where did this tale come from and why has it gotten spread around so much. Now, as I was doing so, I'm sure Google was tracking every time I clicked a website that said itching ears. So now for the next month and a half, I will have remedies for itching ears popping up on everything that I search on the Internet. But, but that's how the world works today. And what I found out is many of these... Many of these myths or superstitions are spiritual and even biblical. So here are just a few that I found. And I found out that it matters which ear is itching. So if your right ear is itching, the most common found myth about itching right ears is that someone is talking good about you. It means the person who is talking about you is praising you and your deed. Second one I found was the person has good intentions towards you. The words that are being spoken are good and positive about you. The good omen of the itchy ear 
or the right ear itching is always symbolized with good fortune and happiness in your near future. And although it can be irritating, those good fortunes and happiness and prosperity make it worth it. Now on the other hand, if your left ear itches, it means the person who is talking about you is cursing you or your deed. The person has negative intentions towards you. The words that are being spoken are bad or wrong about you. Left ear itching not only irritates you for a while, but it also brings you worries and troubles for a long time in the future. To mitigate the negative effect of the itchy left ear, think about the results before commencing any task. So now that everybody is sitting here thinking about the last time their ears itched and which one it was, let us dig into this text d- deeper. The itchy ears mentioned in our scripture is part of a larger verse in which one theologian speaks of these itchy ears as the people who do not adhere to the teaching of the apostles and seek doctrines and messages that make their lifestyle easier and more comfortable. Itching ears is the prediction of the future of the people who follow the teaching described in the Bible. In the future, the lust of people will drive them away from the apostolic teaching. Now this is just one interpretation of these words. There are many interpretations of these words. I could stand up here for hours reading interpretations of just this scripture because there's that many of them out there. But when we back up just a few verses in our scripture today, We read a couple of verses about this interpretation where Paul writes to Timothy and it's written that all scripture is inspired by God. Can I get an amen? And is useful for teaching. Amen. This one is a little, these next two are a little harder for reproof and correction. I'll give that an amen. And for training of righteousness, well, that's definitely an amen. So that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient and equipped for every good work. Yeah. Um, It doesn't say some people are prepared for God. It doesn't say those that X, Y, Z are prepared for God. It says that all are equipped for every good work. That everyone who belongs to God may be proficient in the Scripture. It doesn't say just some. But it was just some for many generations, even thousands of years. For many years, many thousands of years, the scripture was only available in Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic. Then it became available in Latin. We still haven't hit a language that I understand. It wasn't until many, 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 many generations later that we get the scripture that we have today, the translations that we have today. These translations have gone through so many revisions. How do we know that the words we're reading right here are still the words that were scribed on those scrolls weeks, months, or days later after the scribe returned to their home from the adventure they were on with Jesus? So our interpreter of the itching ears is following in the words that Paul wrote to him. We are challenged with these same things each and every day. And yes, I know we have grown up. Many of us have grown up in the church. We've been raised 
with the Scriptures. We've been raised with the meanings of the Scriptures that have been taught to us for generations upon generations. We call that tradition. Are those God-inspired? Most likely. But don't let yourself stop there. Understand the breath of God is still blowing today. Each and every time you open your Bible and you read Scripture, the breath of God is allowing you to interpret that Scripture as you read it. What does it mean in your personal circumstances right this moment? While I was over in the Blue Devils tramping grounds this week, doing my continuing education, they presented a, a uh, plenary about the Psalms. And Dr. Ellen Davis is, has just completed an entire rewrite or interpretation of the Psalms for Duke Chapel's hymnal. I ask myself, does that mean that those are hers or those are God-breathed inscriptions? I would say those are probably the most God-breathed translations that we could ever find. That woman is like a saint. She looked at the earliest Hebrew she could find for each and every psalm. She looked and did the research on each and every word that could it mean this, could it mean that. She put time, energy, prayer into doing this. Did she maybe get something wrong? It's possible. She's human too. But I won't ever be able to verify it. Because I can't read old Hebrew. I can't read new Hebrew for that matter. So I take her word. And that's what we do when we read the scriptures. We take the word. We ingest it. Now if we just take it and ingest it and don't interpret it, then we are not doing what God has asked us to do. We are not feeling the breath of God through those words. The words we hold in our hand, like I said, have been translated multiple, multiple times. They may be correctly translated, they may be incorrectly translated. But they're translated using the breath of God. And what Paul tells us in this letter is that there's a chance for us to correct that if they're incorrectly translated. There's a chance for us to revise that if we find that they're incorrectly translated. Even, I would say, a chance to update the wording to what is spoken in today's vernacular because that is just a vernacular translation which is what Paul has said in this letter that everyone should be able to to read and understand the scriptures. That includes the kids of this generation that I'm still not convinc are convinced speak real English. Because I can't understand half the words that come out of that one's mouth. And I know can't write because everything's in abbreviations and emojis and everything else. And I see a couple of them <laughs> looking at each other like, uh... Maybe. <laughs> and no, I'm not saying we're going to get an emoji Bible anytime soon. I couldn't deal with that. But understand that different vernaculars understand different words differently. So maybe something that made sense in Old English doesn't make as much sense in today's English. I don't know about you, but I struggle to read through King James for multiple reasons, but primarily it's because 
of the wording that is used. Now Wesley, I'm not going to leave you without a little teaching today. Wesley believed in this tradition. Wesley, John Wesley, our founder. But that wasn't the only lens he looked through at each and every situation that he was encountered with. Instead, Wesley looked through a four-lens set of glasses, so to speak. Wesley looked through the lenses of Scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. Now, I could go on for a diatribe about what each of those means and everything, but that's for another day. It is the last two where we as a nation need to focus in order for the church to be relevant in today's society. It is there where we find the interpretation of what it means to have the itchy ears that was read earlier. It is there where we, as Christians, find ourselves experiencing God. It is there where we apply those new ideas to the world we live in today. I believe we can make a difference in the trajectory of the church. I do believe that. But it's going to take us to start feeling those itches and realize, am I spreading something that's not right and evil, or am I spreading something that is good? Am I doing what I am called to be doing, or am I doing what I'm called to be against? Am I helping, or am I hindering? Next time that ear itches, it may be a sign. It may just be an ear infection. But more than likely, it'll be a sign to action, a sign to rise up. Maybe a sign to rethink the words that you have been using. Maybe even the words that you are believing and have believed for a long time and have been following because it's tradition. In all of this, though, it is a sign. And how we, or if we, receive that is upon us individually. But if we follow the Lord and let the Lord determine where those signs lead us, let the Lord and Jesus Christ carry us through those, term, term, those bad times. Words are not working this morning. I'm human, what can I say? It's Jesus that is carrying us each and every way. It's Jesus that we've been singing about. The church is not just a building. The church is the people. The church is Jesus. The light is the lamp. The Word is our guidance. The Word is our light through this messed up, broken world that we live in. But how do we, how do we individually and collectively go to the next level? We ensure we have a firm foundation. We ensure that, that firm foundation is based on Jesus Christ walking next to us each and every day. Amen? Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand And everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why You got joy.
Jesus never fails. Please rise and receive this benediction. Turn the main volume back up a little bit, Bubba. Benediction in the form of a poem that I was reminded of as I listened to that song this morning. Probably uh, will recognize it about the third line in. One night I dreamed a dream. I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me and one belonging to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back in the footprints in the sand and I noticed that many times along my path, the path of my life, especially at my very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me. So I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said, I did, when I, once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all of the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. And then he whispered, my precious child, I love you, and I will never leave you, never, ever leave you. During your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Let us be carried by the Lord when we are in trouble. Let us be carried by the Lord when we don't recognize that it's not the Lord speaking to us. Let us be carried by the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, in all of those times of trouble, each and every day. So go forth, knowing that even if there's only one set of footprints behind you, the Lord is still with you still watching over you, and at that time, most likely, just carrying you through the storm. Go in peace, knowing that the Lord will carry you. Amen? All right, do I need to...